Alright guys, recently we've been filtering our way through the gruesome and grotesque halls of body horror in cinema and in our previous part 2 entry we astutely noted the reverence that Japanese horror in particular has for the vile abominations of the human form where we noted that it would need an entire list of its own to accurately portray the true insanity of Japanese body horror. And well, here we have it, we're sticking to our word by delivering you some of the grossest most stomach churning films in Japanese cinema but we're also going to make sure that they're incredibly entertaining because after all what's the point in getting grossed out if you can't have fun while you're doing it. Hello horror fans what's going on and once again welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube top 5 scary videos. As per usual I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 most disgusting body horror movies from Japan. Roll the clip. <laughs> For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 2008's Tokyo Gore Police, an absolutely insane depiction of all things Japanese body horror, which also happens to be an incredibly entertaining film, featuring all manners of weaponry where limbs would usually be instead. But hey, that's the point though, right? It leads us to an interesting point because as we've already mentioned, quite a few of the classics in our other body horror list, we won't be recycling any previous entries. So honourable mentions go to Tokyo Gore Police, of course, as well as Tetsuo the Iron Man, and of all the entries that followed it. Also some B movie body horror films are just kind of too much to feature on this list so shout out goes to Rubber's Lover, Gio and Tomio. Anyway, let's begin. Kicking off at number 5, Uzumaki, 2000. <laughs> Um, and if you think this film is weird and terrifying and deeply unsettling then believe me this is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to body horror. In actual fact though Uzumaki also known as Spiral is perhaps the most traditional of J horror movies on this list and it's more akin to the likes of 2001's Pulse or 2002's Juan the Grudge than it is to the pure entertainment factor found in most tongue in cheek body horror. And really if you're looking for a film to be straight up creeped out by then 2000's Uzumaki is the one for you and there are more than enough genuinely dread inducing scenes throughout for a traditional horror fan to get by. And that's without people sprouting shells from their shoulders or growing a sentient head of hair hell bent on destroying the minds of an entire high school. Released as the feature film debut of Akiro Higuchi under the alias of Higuchinsky, Uzumaki is a film presented in four parts that slowly unpicks the tale of a small town known as Kuruzu that quickly becomes plagued by a strange fascination for spiralized patterns. As the story drudges onward, the typical high school drama of a girl named Kurei, played by Eriko Hatsune, gradually unwinds as her boyfriend's father becomes obsessed with filming the spiral patterns found on a snail shell, drawing them in his scrapbooks and trying to recreate the perfect markings. Soon enough, that odd fascination seems to have spread to the entire town. And I won't say any more because what plays out is one of the most bizarre and equally terrifying descents into complete and utter madness. Like like many body horror films from Japan, Uzumaki is based off of the 1998 manga of the same name, written and created by Junji Ito and for the most part Higuchi's depiction of Ito's work is second to none. Believe me though, this film is weird. Really, really weird. Coming in at number 4, Parasite 2014. Uh, yeah. My thoughts exactly. The truth of the matter is though 2014's Parasite is an awesome film and it remains to be without a doubt the most action packed sci-fi body horror mashup perhaps ever produced by Japan in a way that only Japanese cinema can seem to capture. This film just wouldn't have been made by western studios or it would have and they would have completely missed out some of the oddly specific details that makes it so awesome. Also it's important to note that we'll be including part 1 and part 2 of this film series in one point because it's such a a sprawling epic sci-fi horror that it needed two movies to leave its mark like the parasitic alien that it is. Although the first film is definitely the better of the two. Written and directed by Takashi Yamazaki based upon the 1988 manga of the same name by Hitoshi Iwaki, Parasite tells the tale of a high school student Shinji Izumi who after witnessing an invasion of parasitic aliens that infect humans by crawling into their brain is partially saved by being fully infected himself after his own parasite failed to bypass his headphones. Pretty lucky, but even luckier for him, Shinichi's parasite instead infects his entire right hand, bestowing on him bizarre body morphing properties in a horror fueled, super heroic manner. 
If you're enticed by that premise, then watch this film. It's important to note though that 2014's Parasite doesn't necessarily use body horror as a consistent means for gross out or fear inducing scenes, although there are a lot of them. In many ways this film is like if John Carpenter's The Thing actually became a good parasitic life form and bestowed McCready with supernatural world saving abilities. If that sounds like your cup of tea, then that's exactly what this film is. Next up at number 3, Meatball Machine, 2005. Talking of parasites, yeah, meatball machine. Because also, yeah, we can't do a list about Japanese body horror without talking about the strange second cousin of the family that is 2005's Meatball Machine. And yeah, I don't really know how else to put it. To say that this film is insane is to put it lightly. But as I also often say, horror fans, therein lies the point of it. For fans of straight up splatterhouse gore with some of the most insanely exaggerated physical effects that only true B movie horror can pump out, Meatball Machine is the cherry on the top of the gore ridden cake. Also, if you can get your hands on the 1999 short that is based on by Junichi Yamamoto, be my guest. But for the most part, we'll be looking at the 2005 feature release of this film. I mean both of them are the same story and it's also equally insane, not like it matters in any way. Co-directed by Yudai Yamaguchi and Junichio Yamamoto, Meatball Machine tells the tale of Yoji, a stereotypical loner that works in a factory where the highlight of his day is pining over his co-worker and unrequited love, Sachiko, although he's unable to tell her of his undying affection. But unluckily for him, that's before Sachiko is infected by a strange alien object that rapidly turns her into a grotesque biomechanical monster known as a necroball that have unwittingly infected the entire planet contorting human flesh into machinery in order to create a bizarre array of deadly weaponry. And as chance would have it, Yoji also gets infected by the Necroborg parasite and the two would be lovers descend into a meatball machine induced showdown of blood, guts, gore and chaos. Yeah, the plot doesn't really matter at all because you won't exactly be watching this movie for the love story of a generation, but that's exactly why it's awesome. Now many have claimed that Meatball Machine is just a rip off of Tetsuo the Iron Man and in some ways it is but Meatball Machine sticks out like a sore thumb in his own uniquely brilliant way. And for all the right reasons. Give this one a watch. Swinging in at number two, Mutant Girl Squad, 2010. <laughs> Alright guys, now we're hitting the outer extremities of this particular list where the opposing forces of weirdness and entertainment start to collide in all their gory glory. You see the thing is body horror in Japanese cinema as well as television and literature is so widespread that in more recent times taking the desecration of the human form and turning it into pure horror fueled entertainment in a mishmash of all jumbles of genres has become an art in and of itself. Mutant Girl Squad is perhaps the apex of that art and it is in fact one of the weirdest and insanely entertaining movies to have ever been released in recent times, was also just being straight up disgusting. But obviously in a good way, which is an incredibly unique and difficult thing to do well. Written and directed by Nobura Aguchi alongside Yoshihiro Nishimura and Tak Sagaguchi, Mutant Girl Squad is a heroic story like no other. It tells the tale of a 16 year old high school student who after being relentlessly bullied at school, one day conveniently discovers that she's the direct ancestor of an ancient line of mutant warriors and soon starts growing a mutagenic metallic claw on her right hand that has a habit of slicing and dicing its unfortunate victims in all manners of gore induced violence. Strangely enough though despite its outrageous premise Mutant Girl Squad actually packs an incredibly entertaining narrative beneath its grotesque visual effects. This film is hilarious in places, it's entirely ridiculous and completely over the top but it doesn't take itself too seriously without detracting from its enjoyment. It's extreme, it's full of all all manners of gonzo gore and it's jammed to the rafters with bizarre scene after bizarre scene but once you just let it do its thing there's a real charm to 2010's Mutant Girl Squad and in a genre of pure chaos and insanity it still manages to pack some serious heart. Give it a watch, you will not be disappointed with this film. And finally coming in at our number one spot, Akira 1988. <laughs> As it remains, we cannot talk about Japanese body horror without talking about this film. 
it just couldn't ever happen. And while some of you may find Umbridge with an animated movie finding its way to our top spot on this list, I'd have to wholeheartedly disagree with you. Because whilst being one of the most complete displays and demonstrations of the true meaning behind Japanese body horror, this is also perhaps one of the finest animated films ever made, horror or otherwise. Akira is for the most part a cautionary tale, and when you pick apart the flesh and sinew that have emerged from the machine, the underlying message behind the price that we pay to augment the human form becomes clearer and clearer. You won't necessarily find everything that you're looking for in a horror film here, but perhaps more importantly than that, you'll be left with an idea of the essence behind body horror. For those of you that haven't seen Akira, I'd strongly suggest that you do so, and because of that, I'll try my hardest not to spoil anything. Written and directed by Katsuhiro Otomo, based upon his 1982 manga of the same name, Akira paints the picture of a dystopian Neo Tokyo. In an oppressive, sprawling metropolis, under the sway of an oppressive and incredibly powerful military technocracy. Two best friends and members of a rebel biker gang, Kanada and Tetsuo, unwittingly become involved in a bizarre military conspiracy that seeks to draw out latent psychic powers that lie within unique individuals. And that's it, because you'll have to discover the rest for yourself. For fans of anything to do with pure fragments of horror, science fiction, cyberpunk, dystopian speculation, the futuristic apocalypse, whatever, there's so much to be found in 1988's Akira. Yes, this film is animated, and yes, it may waylay the pure joy found in grotesque physical effects, but believe me, the animation and pure craft poured into this film is legendary for a reason. This is one of the most perfect films ever made, and the fact that we can feature it at the top spot of our Japanese body horror list is just a bonus. Also, there's a live action adaptation slated to be released in 2021, which is being directed by none other than Taika Waititi, and although die-hard fans of this film may wince at that thought, I've got an inkling that body horror is about to make a resurgence. Well, there we have it, horror fans, our list for the top five most disgusting body horror movies from Japan. What do you guys think? Do you agree, disagree, have any entries of your own? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Before we depart from today's video, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Aurora Marie Almeria says, Jack, I love you, but these two videos make me sick. Body horror, Aurora, body horror. I'm sorry? And finally, Tater Tokinski says, I think body horror has been around since mankind started forming stories in the first place. Countless examples from folklore would fall into this category. I also think Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis should be mentioned. David Cronenberg has cited it as a huge influence on him and his work. I couldn't agree more, Tater Tokinski. Brilliant stuff. Also, great name. Well, unfortunately, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just top five scary videos in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.